Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 12th. It's been kind of a slow news day, news day, news week in science. So what I am going to do, since they've pretty much set it up for me just excellent, is I'm going to give credit to all the people that have bothered to go to the Facebook uh, Dumpster Diver site. We do have a, our own Facebook page started by a friend of mine. And I'm going to go down all of the articles that have been posted since my last TDD report on December 6th. And they've come up with some really excellent stuff, better than I could have even come up with for this short week. So I'm going to give credit, and all the links will be down below. So even if you're not a member of the Dumpster Divers group on Facebook, or you're not even a member of Facebook, you will get to join in on the, this week's fun that we had with the Dumpster Divers Facebook page. So first up, this is from Peter L. A bit of competition from Virgin Historic Rocket Landing Blue. Origins New Shepard Space Vehicle successfully flew to space, reached a planned best altitude of 329, well, just short of 330,000 feet, and did a perfect landing back on Earth, an upright landing. The same kind of thing, I'd, I'd done some articles before about the SpaceX that were going to try to land the craft back upright on a barge, and it came close the last time but still wasn't able to stay upright and fell over well this one actually did uh, end up accomplishing it and the Blue Origin company is owned by Jeff Bezos the founder of Amazon.com whereas the Space X Corporation was um, that was from um, Elon Musk the founder of Tesla Motors he's the one that does the SpaceX one so uh, really good we got some good competition going here and uh, uh, I'll put, post the link so you can check out the video. It's about it's about a three minute video. This next one was posted by my friend David F. A bit of history, newfangled writing machine, and they get into what the newfangled writing machine was. Was the very first typewriter, the Remington Number One typewriter. An interesting fact: Samuel Clemens, otherwise known as Mark Twain, actually wrote the first turned in manuscript for a book on a typewriter. And this old typewriter, Remington Number One, only typed in capital letters. So get a chance to check out that article. Very good, very fascinating article. And then my friend Rex C. posted an article, Want to Become an Astronaut? Applications open in a week. And this was posted on the 10th, I believe. Yeah, on the 10th. So that means sometime around the 17th or so. I'm guessing the application's open. So if you think you want to become an astronaut, and they're talking about possibly for the Mars adventure, they may be looking at older astronauts, like maybe people in their 40s and 50s. So even if you're like say in your 30s now and it takes 20 years to get to Mars you could start out as an astronaut and maybe get to be one of, the, one of the first ones that walk on Mars so if you think you have the right stuff follow the link here that I will give you below and see if you can be an astronaut and next uh, my friend uh, Anthony Crazy Italian M posted a short video about a guy took a meter just a regular electric meter and shows uh, with a 100 watt bulb what the meter turns around like the little wheel on the meter and the, the turning and the spinning and then connects up the same equivalent LED light to it and you should see the difference in the way the little meter wheel spins you can barely see the thing move at all like I don't think I could really for sure I thought maybe I saw it moving but it it's so slow that it's almost barely detectable so to give you an idea of what the difference between a 100 watt incandescent and a 100 watt LED bulb is and then Catherine S., she's another regular contributor. All these people that I'm talking about, they contribute on a regular basis pretty much to the Dumpster Divers uh, page on Facebook. No more glasses and a bonus of supervision, an eight-minute surgery that will give you superhuman vision forever. This is something uh, that's going to be similar to an experience I went through just recently. Uh, two years ago in October, I had lens implants in my eyes because my regular lenses had fogged up from cataracts, and this is a... Uh, lens that can replace your normal lens. In fact, it has to to work right. And they claim that it'll give you three times better than 20-20 vision. In other words, a, a clock that most people could see from 10 foot away, you'd be able to see it from 30 foot away, or pretty much anything. So uh, not only giving you perfect vision, but giving you a little bit better vision than humans were ever, uh, ever had in the past. Maybe like, uh, you know, like a set of 3X binoculars or something. Um, no idea how they're doing the focus and stuff like that. It may be one of those things with uh, several types of grinds. They claim that it can give you restored close-up vision, restored normal vision, and the vision from far away. 
And next up from Tom W., and this is kind of a, an add-on to what I had talked about to the uh, Germany, the uh, St Stellarator reactor, the uh, thing that's kind of like the Tokamak donut type of deal, but this one is made a little bit different. It's kind of like a, a twisty kind of donut. Well, they've actually started doing tests on it with helium before they start with uh, hydrogen and, and fire that up. They're going to test it with helium and make sure it can... Uh, do everything it's supposed to do, I guess. Make sure the magnets, the electronics are working. Make sure it's airtight, things like that. So uh, they're getting ready to uh, get it, get finalized with those tests and then move on to hydrogen and maybe produce some actual plasma reaction. And if they can get an over-unity reaction, well, we actually have uh, accomplished nuclear fusion, what we've been trying to do for a very long time. And then another post by Anthony M. This is just a short post of three steam locomotives uh, connected together just going across uh, the frame on the on the deal but it's it's still kind of cool I mean to me steam engines and trains I mean that was pretty much the beginning of uh, what was preceding the internet I guess I mean connecting people all across land in some way in, in some shape or form that was faster than just walking or what horses could do and things like that I mean high-speed travel these trains could go up to 70 miles per hour on the track so to me that was kind of like the beginnings of the idea of a uh, quicker human communication and it also led to after that the telegraph which to me was the direct predecessor of the internet high-speed communication and then finally the last one is from Rex C again and this is um, the eco car it's uh, a cool little car that can um, I don't know if I've done this exact car I think I've rather done other cars similar but I'll put a link down to this car and this is just a little video of how this car works on the uh, fact that you can join them together in car trains and stuff like that. It's a very small car that goes semi-upright to be able to park so it can um, shrink itself down front to back to take up a little bit less space and then scoot sideways into a parking spot. But the real cool thing on the video they show here is that you can go in a nice uh, type of car train and then have one of you just disconnect from the car train and then go out your exit and then the other cars join up and keep continuing on their way. But yeah, I just have this kind of computer control and it shows a guy in the video uh, relaxing and just enjoying his newspaper as he goes along so anyway if you want to check out all these different articles the links will be below and I thank you I thank everybody that's been a part of the dumpster divers group it's been a great group it's provided me with material many times when I didn't have enough material to do the TDD report or there just wasn't that much science news um, the only thing going on this week that I could tell you is uh, if you want to go on Google and do a search there's some more high-resolution images of Pluto being downloaded and posted to the public so um, that's something that's coming out now so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week